In this demonstration, we're going to show you how the SRX can identify Blue Sky ransomware and isolate an infected host in the context of ransomware attack. In August 2022, Blue Sky ransomware was covered by the media. It has multi-threaded processing that enables quick file encryption. The attack begins with a PowerShell script that downloads additional files to escalate its privileges before downloading and executing the ransomware. L.exe. We will now show you how this attack works and how it encrypts files. On this window desktop, you'll see some important documents like a PDF, a WordPad file, and other type of important documents. We will open up a PowerShell and launch the attack from in there. But before we launch the attack, we want to make sure that we start Wireshark so that we can show you how the malicious download happens. Once we launch the attack, you will see right away that the PowerShell script is downloaded and executed and will further download other files such as potato.exe, ghost.exe, spooler.exe, and also the ransomware l.exe. By launching a process monitor, we can show you that the ransomware process is actually named javaw.exe. By opening the file handles of this process, you can also see how this ransomware is enumerating files it tries to encrypt. After some time, you can eventually see that the desktop's data was encrypted. Each file it encrypted had a dot blue sky attached to the file name. A ransomware note was also left behind, and when we open this HTML file, it will actually give us instructions on what we need to do to pay the ransom. When we open the file importantstuff.bluesky, we can actually see that it is indeed an encrypted file. For this attack demo setup, we'll be using a virtual SRX, a security director, policy enforcer, and several Windows workstations, one of which will be used to gain access to the management of the security director. The attack will be launched by a different machine, and we will host our malicious files on an Ubuntu server, which will serve as the malware download server. We used RDP to gain access to one of the Windows machines in order to log into our security director management. Once we log into our management platform, we can see that the virtual SRX already is installed with the Juniper ATP license. Next, we will open our threat prevention policy. And as you can see here, it's already configured to block CNC connections at level seven with the ATP cloud feed as well as the threat score of level 7. In simulating this attack we will log into one of the Windows hosts. By looking at the system information of this machine, you can see that it's a Windows 10 Pro machine, which has an IP address of 10.0.1.67. 
Next, we want to make sure that this host has internet connectivity. Before we launch our attack in PowerShell, we want to make sure that we open Wireshark so that we can view the download as they happen. Now opening the PowerShell and starting the script to launch the attack. And soon you'll see that the downloads have started from PS1 and the files potato.exe, ghost.exe, spooler.exe, and L were downloaded by PS1. Going back to our security director management and then under the threat monitoring tab, we can see that the host has indeed been, been identified and the source IP address is 10.0.1.67. When we head to our HTTP file download section, you can see that these files were categorized with malware with a threat level of 10. Once you click on one of the hashes, you'll actually deep dive into details, which shows you the malware name and the behavioral analysis. Clicking further inside the behavioral analysis, you will see why this file is classified as a threat. Next, under ATP Cloud Hosts, we can see that our host has been classified with a threat level of 10. And the reason why that has happened is because of the malicious file download that had a score of 10. And what this means is that this host has now been disconnected from the network. Going back to our host, we can see that indeed we don't have internet connectivity anymore. And we also cannot reach our malware server, the Ubuntu server. In security director under the all host status, we can see that the host has been successfully blocked, disconnecting them from the network and from further harming the environment. Assuming that the host has been cleaned up and is now ready to be put back on the network again, we can go into the host and once we go to the investigation status, which is currently open, we can choose the different option, which would be resolved fixed, meaning that we have looked at the problem and we have fixed it, cleaned the machine, and it's ready to be put onto the network again. Once you click this, the host status will be updated and the host now has access back to the network. Going back to our host, we're gonna make sure that we have internet connectivity again. So we're gonna test to see a connection to twitter.com. And then also just to double check, YouTube is also working. So with a clean machine, we are back on the network. 